Okay, so, so let me very briefly tell you that um, it's, a, it's a great uh, privilege to have you here again with us today. Uh, we consider you as a very big friend of our community, as you know. So I want to welcome, uh, welcome you back. Uh, we strongly appreciate our uh, partnership that, you know, enables us to answer to this very difficult pandemic. We want uh, to work together with you, and uh, we want to work together to intensify, as I said earlier, our DJ Regio COR joint actions, which are based on two clear objectives, to identify the needs and improve the capacity building for regions, cities, villages, that are planning and implementing the new cohesion policy, and secondly, Communicating jointly on the ground and in grassroots the added value and benefits of cohesion to people's everyday life. So, for these two objectives, we can work together with uh, using all the 12,000 cohesion alliance partners that we have as community the region. And uh, I really believe that by working together, we can find a way to involve regions and cities even more in uh, the coronavirus pandemic response and recovery plan. So thank you very much again, dear Commissioner, for being here today. And the floor is now yours. Okay, thank you very much. I, have, I hadn't heard, in fact, uh, um, your words, uh, your kind words. So it's really a very, it's also a pleasure for me to, to be able to participate uh, in, your, uh, in your assembly, in your plenary. And, uh, and I think this, uh, I mean, this uh, periodic uh, meetings are essential for us uh, to keep in touch and for understanding how much we are um, being able together to, to achieve our common purposes. And in fact, as you uh, has, have just underlined, we are partners in, um, and we are uh, natural allies in, uh, in, in the as our, our, our interests are, are, are common. I have prepared for, uh, for the sake of, uh, of, of time, I have prepared uh, a couple of notes. And so I will uh, suggest that we start by it and then I'm open to questions or to comments and usual discussions as we usually do. So uh, I will start immediately. Uh, dear President and uh, honorable members and ladies and gentlemen, uh, in fact, a lot has happened since we last met in plenary, uh, and I think it was the 12th of October, if I'm not mistaken, of, um, of 2020, so of last year. And back then, uh, we were still negotiating the cohesion policy files, uh, and there was a uncertainty regarding the final adoption of the multiannual financial framework and next generation. When we think back, uh, we can see how much we have done since then, all of us, all together. And now React EU has already entered into force the first instrument, in fact, to be approved from the next generation package. The Just Transition Fund and Interreg uh, are now ready for final adoption. Uh, a political agreement has been reached on the recovery and resilience facility, and we have already made substantial progress uh, with the support, a very strong support from uh, the Committee of the Regions uh, from the European Parliament, and also from uh, within the, the, uh, the, um, the framework of the German presidency. Uh, we almost finished the regulations and uh, we are expecting that uh, both the Common Provisions Regulation and the, the European Regional Development Fund and Cohesion Fund Regulations uh, probably will, will be able to, to, to seal the deal uh, next week, that's our hope, in the, in the, tr in the final trilogues we already now with the, the Portuguese Presidency. And I want to also to express my thanks to this committee because, you, I mean, you are always very active. Uh, you have done relentless work. Uh, uh, your unwavering support is, uh, has been essential. And these regulations laid the basis, uh, I hope, for a sustainable recovery. 
and also long-term transition to the green and digital economy, uh, hopefully for every region in Europe. This is our shared goal. We managed uh, to put cohesion, in fact, at the center of this emergency response of the economic uh, recovery, of the just transition, and recently as an important element of the response also to Brexit, because uh, we have an, another instrument uh, which is uh, in also, also being prepared uh, and ultimated, which is the Brexit Adjustment Reserve. So now I think it's the time uh, to shift from plans to implementation. We, uh, we use this kind of image uh, in other occasions, but in fact in the crisis, and with the Coronavirus Response Investment Initiative, which, which was this CRE and CRE Plus, that was really something completely new that we did with your support. And we have put what I could call our firefighters helmet. In our work on the regulations, we got out our architects' blueprints. But now it's time for the engineers and for the workers to implement. So it's now a lot on your shoulders and member states' shoulders. And in fact, uh, we need to use uh, all our capacities, all our engineers' uh, toolbox and construction toolbox. So the challenge now is to build back better after the crisis, to build a new, a greener, a more digital economy to provide jobs and opportunities in every region. And in short, we must get out of the toolbox and build, uh, build forward uh, in a better way. Uh, and get to work we must, because uh, we have been given a once-in-a-generation opportunity. Uh, it's the opportunity of an enhanced and expanded cohesion policy, the opportunity of the new recovery and resilience facility, which is really a big thing, and in the next few years, many regions will see uh, their European funding double, uh, in certain cases almost uh, triple. So, ladies and gentlemen, we must make the most of this historic occasion. Today, I suggest that we review the main opportunities and uh, let us share our practical reflections on making the most for all our regions. No, regions left, left, no region left behind, no European forgotten is a nice slogan, but now we have got to put it in practice. And uh, I would uh, um, like to underline uh, uh, three points. First, in fact, I, I want to reaffirm this, this idea that we, make, we have to make the most of cohesion policy. It's our, our test also on delivery. Uh, there are, in fact, more instruments, more opportunities, more investment than ever before. To start with, uh, let us use to the full, and we are the regions are already using it to the full, the Coronavirus Response Investment Initiative. Uh, for you to have an idea of where we are, um, 180 cohesion programs have already been amended in a very speedy way, so very fast. A lot of, uh, of uh, reprogramming has been done through simplification at the regional or national level. And we have mobilized 20 billion euros of uh, cohesion investment from the national envelopes, as you know, that were, not, uh, that were unspent uh, to counter the crisis. With this money, and a lot of freedom has been given to member states to reallocate as they need, but uh, 4,500 uh, ventilators are being supplied. Uh, 500 laboratories across Europe supported for, the, for being able to test for COVID. Half a million small and medium enterprises are receiving grants. And uh, I mean, a lot of other, uh, of other uh, support to schools, uh, to computers. I mean, different member states used it differently. Uh, regions are benefiting from it, and this is really something that often we are not aware of the role of cohesion policy in this process. Uh, the crisis is not yet over, and uh, if your region, if you find that there, there is still unallocated cohesion investment from the 2014-2020 period, of course, 
I urge you to speak with local uh, program managers about if you don't have already allocated money to specific projects that still, I mean, are going on. Uh, but if if there is some some empty and some needs on the other hand, you can still mobilize it for healthcare or for economic support. Uh, second instrument, let us make the most also of React EU. This is a 47.5 billion euros of new resources borrowed from the financial markets. So we cannot yet use this money, but we can use uh, some sort of transition bridge finance so that when the money is available, it can refinance. Because one of the characteristics of React EU is that it can finance back uh, projects that uh, provided they are a response to the crisis and they uh, provided they have started after, after the 1st of February 2020. Uh, so my services are, are, are working with the, the national and regional authorities to ensure these resources reach the real economy as soon as possible. Uh, and I ask for your support in three areas. First, in ensuring that investment swiftly reaches the regions where they are needed most. In fact, this instrument, REACT, is a cohesion policy instrument. Second, that you support for that uh, your support for investment uh, is also regarding the future. That is not some money that is leaves nothing on the ground. Uh, and so, these climate objectives, digital transition, strengthening the resilience of healthcare systems, creating employment, uh, and employing young people is important. So, if you can relaunch the economy, tackle the coronavirus impact but create something that remains after the crisis, it's much better than just having expenditure. And third, your support also in ensuring that the partnership principle is respected. Uh, of course, we are under pressure, we are in a crisis mode, but swift programming does not mean programming without partners. Uh, so um, this is an instrument react that really is very, very it's a strong potential is the the, the follow-up of the CRE instrument, uh, and up to 2023, I think it is a very important instrument. Then let us make the most of the so-called usual or more traditional um, uh, regional fund and cohesion fund. And I'm very proud of the agreement we have reached there. More simplification, a single regulation covering the regional fund and cohesion fund, a sharp reduction of implementing acts, so a uh, strong thematic concentration, I call your attention towards this element with a focus on the future, on the green and digital transitions. There are also more resources for cities and a dedicated priority for tourism and culture. Uh, and also health infrastructures can be supported. Uh, and you know these funds very well, so I don't want to, to spend time with this. Uh, you know the importance of being involved right now in the programming phase. Make sure the voice of the regions are heard. Make sure the voice of all partners are heard. Make sure the programs, programs focus on the long-term needs of your regions. Let us make the most also of the Just Transition Fund. This is uh, 17.5 billion euros to support those that are most affected by the climate transition. This is very specific for these very critical transitions in very critical areas. So this is a kind of a pilot experiment. The, the key next step here is for member states to present to us the local built, the bottom up built territorial just transition plans. Member states are responsible for drawing this up, um, but uh, it, it needs a lot of active involvement at local level. Uh, in this context, I welcome your offer of a multi-level dialogue as a part of this Just Transition platform. We must, in fact, work um, on the practicalities and timing, but your context, your contribution uh, will definitely add value to this platform. So this is my first point. I just tried to highlight the kind of instruments that are available now uh, nothing new for you, but uh, I think it might be of use to have a broad view of what is avail available. 
and in fact, there are massive opportunities. Nevertheless, there are other sources of support outside the pure cohesion policy. And this brings me to the second point, making the most of other instruments. Uh, I think it's very important to highlight the, uh, the, new, the, better, the best possible way to combine, for instance, uh, instruments of, uh, that are not uh, partnership instruments, they are more typical uh, EU initiative instruments such as Horizon, uh, engage more and more at the re regional level and it's very important uh, your connection and the establishment are already have a framework with Horizon, also with Social Fund, but I would like to call your attention to the Recovery and Resilience Facility because it is an unprecedented instrument. It's 672.5 billion uh, of loans and grants supporting investments and reforms. And it is important to note uh, that the key next step here is the preparation and that is underway already by member states of the recovery and resilience plans. You have a crucial role in these plans. Member states must outline how they plan, how their plan will contribute also to promote uh, growth-inducing reforms, enhancing cohesion, taking into account local, regional, uh, national disparities, and you are the voice of regions here in Brussels. So I strongly encourage you to continue to speak out on this, because in fact, the recovery and resilience facility cannot be territorially blind. Uh, I particularly ask for your support in ensuring complementarity and consistency with the goals and the instruments of cohesion policy that I've just referred to. But you also have a role in encouraging local voices. We in the Commission believe that these plans will only be, will only be successful with strong regional and local ownership at every stage of the process. We have ensured a strong consultation process. Member States will have to provide a summary of the consultation pro process they have done with local and regional authorities, with social partners, civil society organizations, with youth organizations, and other relevant stakeholders. And this cover both the preparation and the implementation of the plan. Uh, they will also have to explain how these inputs of the stakeholders have re were reflected, in fact, in the plan, to make, a, I mean, to put content in, in the dialogue. Uh, I count on your support in informing all the relevant partners of their right to be involved in the process because it, this creates the ownership, the national and regional and local ownership of the process. And my third point, um, we must make the most of our partners and of the possibilities also to enhance local and regional and central, of course, administrative capacities. In fact, the, in fact, Wait a minute, sorry, because my, my computer went down. Um, just a minute. Yes. Uh, yes. The quality of national, regional and local governance will be, uh, in fact, uh, uh, crucial in the recovery and in long-term investments. Uh, the technical support instrument exists. It's being used now by all member states. And this is a support from the Commission, from DG Reform, to build, in fact, to help member states and regions and local and municipalities to build their administrative capacity and to support reforms. Support under the instrument is not just, as I just mentioned, to, uh, uh, directed towards national authorities. Regional local authorities can also submit requests for technical support and uh, this is a service and an opportunity offering support for your priorities uh, at your request. Uh, I, and I, I urge you to do it because, in fact, uh, it's, a, it's a very sound support. I would also draw your attention to the opportunity of the technical support and their cohesion policy. We recognize the importance of capacity building, not just for delivering projects, but for economic recovery and long-term development. We support administrative capacity for local authorities who are managing authorities or beneficiaries. And we are encouraging member states to be strategic about this. So in the 21-27 period, 
Also, I have launched the option of roadmaps for developing administrative capacity. And to support the roadmaps, these roadmaps, we offer a toolkit uh, as well as uh, peer learning. And so I encourage you to participate and to make the most of this. Partnership with local actors is key to our success in inclusion policy. And the partnership principle is dear, as you know, to our hearts. So uh, in all the new programs, my services are paying particular attention to the code of conduct on partnership and to the application of the partnership principle. We know that the application of this principle differs by member state. So the commission has set up a thematic network on partnership to discuss the issues and spread good practices. We are looking at how citizens, especially young people, are making their voice heard in delivery of the policy. And I ask for your help in identifying and filling gaps in the application of the partnership principle. And I also ask for your help in analyzing and spreading good practices. And in 2020, we launched two new pilot initiatives to support the capacity of managing authorities and of civil society to actively engage citizens in the implementing cohesion policy. I also treasure your collaboration on the European Week of Regions and Cities. This is an enormous success story uh, and I, I congratulate you on all everything that you have done, in particular you and your 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 team, uh, President. Uh, this was really, in fact, a, a tribute, and success was a tribute to the excellent cooperation between uh, our services uh, in the Commission and your services. Uh, last year, in spite of the pandemic, the week was an unprecedented success. There were over 800 partners, more than ever before. There were over 500 sessions, also more than ever before. There were nearly 12,000 participants, again, more than ever before. This is an opportunity to connect with partners and to exchange ideas and good practices. And I look forward to our best year ever for this year. So in conclusion, and I, I'm sorry I took a bit long, but I wanted to, sh to update you on what is, is on the ground now. Some say uh, there is no such thing as luck. Uh, there is only the moment when preparation meets opportunity. So solid preparation meeting a, mo a moment of opportunity. We have years of preparation from our work together, our work on cohesion policy, on partnership principle, on the week of regions and cities. Over the years, this work has already paid off, but now we face a moment of incredible opportunity. And this opportunity is the opportunity to work with an, with an expanded cohesion policy, enhanced budget, new funds, the opportunity to add new investments, such as the recovery and resilience facility and the technical support instrument, the opportunity to put this together for a strong and sustainable recovery and a successful twin transition to a green and digital economy, and the opportunity to deepen also our partnership in a new and innovative way, of course. And I urge you to be present in every plan and every program to speak up for the principles of cohesion and for the rights of the partners. Let our actions in the coming years give them a good story to tell. So thank you very much once again. I apologize for having taken a little bit longer, uh, but I wanted really, as I mentioned before, to share with you where we are and to tell you how much I count, and we count here in DG Regio, uh, how much we count on you and your work and your enthusiasm and your capacity to deliver in this so special phase of our life together. Thank you very much once again. Thank you very much, uh, Commissioner Ferreira. Um, of course, uh, uh, we didn't interrupt you because uh, I really believe that uh, you had uh, very important things to say. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I feel that uh, today's debate is uh, of crucial importance, uh, basically also for its timing. Uh, so please, uh, without further ado, let me give the floor to Olga Geblevich from the EPP. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Dear Madam Commissioner, first of all, I would like to thank you for your informative intervention and uh, 
uh, underlining the special role of local and regional authorities and for a great work you have done during the last months as an EPP uh, COR president as well as the president of West Pomerania region, one of the biggest regions in Poland with a size of 70% of Belgium, I perfectly know how much our villages, cities and regions have suffered from the COVID-19 pandemic and uh, we don't have a time to lose. What we expect is the following. First, to speed up the process of shaping uh, the new operational programs with the, uh, which will answer our local needs and allow uh, us to realize projects on the ground in the fast track. Second, we expect that European Commission to ensure that EU funds are distributed in transparent and fair procedure between not only uh, countries, but between all cities and regions as well. Third, to ensure that local and regional authorities are fully taken on the board when drawing the national recovery plans at this uh, speed up uh, and, and this will speed up their creation and implementation in the end of the day. National governments have to realize that local and regional authorities are not the same as other stakeholders as we hold a political mandate being elected by our citizens. Concluding, I would like to uh, ask you, Madam Commissioner, when we can expect additional money under the uh, REACT EU. This money is needed uh, and are indispensable without any delay in our cities and regions. Thank you very much uh, for your intervention. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Olga. The floor now to Emil Bock from the EPP. Thank you, President. Thank you, dear Commissioner uh, Ferreira, and congratulations for your very pragmatic and concrete presentations. First of all, I'd like to say that I strongly support the message of uh, President Tsikostas and also of the President Geblevich about the emergency, about the urgency to adopt as soon as quick as possible the programs, because this is a matter of trust in the European Union, in the capacity of the European Union to react promptly to the present situation. Let's be honest, at the beginning of the pandemia, the reaction was, of the EU was slowly, but now it's back on track. And now it's time for actions. And from that perspective, the adoption as quick as possible of all the programs, including the recovery and the facility plan, it's important for us. Now, a second comment, it's about uh, cohesion policy. It was a successful program overall from the last period. I can share you the experience of Luznapoca for example, my city, for each euro that we invested here in Cluj from our local budget, we managed to attract 2.5 euros from the European funds. And for example, we invested more than 100 million euros in the public transport and half of them is electrically already in, uh, in place. But now let's move to the, to, to the future. Dear Commissioner, taking into account what I already shared with you, it's a matter of emergency and an importance of providing the local authorities with the possibility of expressing their views in the drafting of the programs. I think the national rules, which make the spending more complex, should, should be an element of the past. And we count on your support, on your trust. Last but not least, I would like to, uh, to mention about uh, the trial, which is now in place between uh, all the, uh, the actors in, in, uh, in Brussels in order to approve the CPR. I have a concrete proposal concerning the Article 58.B to increase from 10% to 20% the level of amount for green spaces. You know, it's a technicality, but it's important for us. And last but not least, pay attention to the flexibility and integration of funds and one in, one out rule. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, dear Commissioner Ferreira. Thank you very much, Prime Minister. Um, the floor now to Brigitte Orné from the PES. Ja, vielen Dank, Herr Präsident. Sehr geehrte Frau Kommissarin, zuallererst möchte ich im Namen meiner Fraktion, der, Kommissar, der Kommission, den Mitgliedstaaten und dem Europäischen Parlament 
Fundament für den Mut danken, neue Wege einzuschlagen. Die Art der Finanzierung ist ein wegweisender, wichtiger Schritt in die richtige Richtung. Die neuen Instrumente sind nicht nur für die Linderung der Folgen der Pandemie wichtig. Es ist ein Paket auf den Weg gebracht worden, das von der Größenordnung her außerordentlich ist. Sie haben es historisch genannt. Dass einige Staaten besser durch die Krise kommen als andere, darf nicht dazu führen, dass die makroökonomischen Ungleichgewichte innerhalb der Europäischen Union noch größer werden. Da die einzelnen Wirtschaften der Mitgliedstaaten miteinander verknüpft und voneinander abhängig sind, können sich Störungen in einem Land leicht auf andere Länder übertragen. Jeder von uns weiß, wie die aktuelle Situation vor Ort aussieht. Jeder von uns weiß, wie notwendig weitere Hilfe ist. Jeder von uns weiß, dass wichtige Kofinanzierung vor Ort in den Regionen wegbricht und die Liquidität immer knapper wird. Aber wir wissen auch, dass wir Herausforderungen der Zukunft haben, die nicht durch die Pandemie verursacht werden. Das Bereitstellen der zusätzlichen Mittel ist notwendig, adressiert wichtige Ziele und hilft uns in den Regionen. Und die Mittel müssen schnell fließen. Ich appelliere an alle, wirken Sie daran mit, dass die Ratifizierung in Ihren Mitgliedstaaten schnellstmöglich abgeschlossen wird. Blockadepolitik Einzelner hat uns schon wertvolle Zeit verlieren lassen. Herzstück der europäischen Wirtschaft sind in der Regel die kleinen und mittleren Unternehmen. Sie sind vor Ort mit den vertrauten Ansprechpartnern vernetzt. Für sie werden dezentrale, flexible Programme benötigt. Ja, es muss sofort auf die Krise geantwortet und reagiert werden. Die langfristigen kohäsionspolitischen Ziele dürfen aber nicht beiseite geschoben werden. Ziel muss die Unterstützung der wirtschaftlichen Erholung in der Folge der Corona-Pandemie durch Förderung des wirtschaftlichen, sozialen und territorialen Zusammenhalts sowie des digitalen und grünen Wandels einschließlich der biologischen Vielfalt und der Umsetzung der Klimaziele bleiben. Insofern ist es gut, dass dieser Anspruch in den Aufbauprogrammen deutlich formuliert wird. Die neuen Instrumente nehmen eine wertvolle Brückenfunktion für den Übergang zwischen dem Auslaufen der alten und dem Beginn der neuen Förderperiode ein und kombinieren diese miteinander. Es ist gut, dass die Ziele aufeinander aufbauen und sich idealtypisch ergänzen. In meinem Hause lasse ich gerade prüfen, wie wir die Mittel aus REACT EU in die Regionalpolitik einbinden können. Wir nutzen in meiner Region verschiedene Instrumente und Fördermittel für einen regionalisierten Ansatz. Unser Ziel ist eine durchgängige Regionalpolitik unter enger Einbindung der Zivilgesellschaft sowie der Wirtschafts-, Wissenschafts- und Umweltakteure. Das Ganze wird von landesweit geltenden Mainstream-Programmen flankiert. So investieren wir in die Zukunftsfähigkeit und machen gleichzeitig die Europäische Europäische Union vor Ort sichtbar. Das entspricht ja auch dem, was Sie eben auch in Ihrem Beitrag auch gefordert haben. Sehr geehrte Frau Kommissarin, ich danke Ihnen, dass Ihre Dienste den regionalen Programmen ein Fast-Track-Verfahren für die Genehmigung zusagen. Das hilft uns vor Ort sehr. Ich befürchte, dass die zeitliche Begrenzung der Mittel für die Aufbauinstrumente uns noch einholen wird. Es kann bei diesem Paket nicht nur um die Liquiditätserhöhung gehen. Gute Projekte benötigen ihre Zeit. Deshalb sollten ihre Planung, Genehmigung, Abwicklung und Abrechnung nicht in einem Fast-Track-Verfahren erfolgen. Deshalb, sehr geehrte Frau Kommissarin, appelliere ich an Sie, die derzeitige Dachverordnung dahingehend zu ändern, dass die faktischen Laufzeiten der Projekte aus dem Aufbaupaket länger laufen können als bisher vorgesehen. Last but not least, wir wissen, dass in jeder Krise auch eine Chance steckt. Lassen Sie uns diese gemeinsam zum Wohle der europäischen Regionen erreichen. Ich danke Ihnen. Thank you very, very much, Thank you very, very much for your intervention. Your intervention. The floor now to, now to Michel Risterman from Mr. Renew Europe. Europe. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, and uh, thank you also, uh, Mrs. Ferreira, uh, for uh, coming here in our uh, meeting. Uh, I'll continue in Dutch. Uh, zoals Mevrouw Ferreira net al aangaf, uh, in de bespreking van uh, de update, er is enorm veel werk verzet uh, door de Europese Commissie en uh, door de verschillende lidstaten. Er is enorm veel werk verzet om nieuwe regelingen op te tuigen die we de komende jaren met elkaar gaan uitvoeren. En die we nodig hebben om, uh, zoals mevrouw Verrijder het al zei, to build back better. Om uh, Europa beter uit deze crisis te laten komen dan dat we erin gegaan zijn. Dit is natuurlijk een gouden kans die we met elkaar zouden moeten pakken. 
Het is ook heel belangrijk om dat met elkaar te doen, om dat samen te doen. Uh, we hebben een, uh, ik heb zelf een advies geschreven voor uh, het comité van de regio's uh, over hoe we de uh, cohesiefondsen onder andere kunnen gebruiken uh, in de huidige situatie van de coronacrisis. En uh, de, dat advies laat zien uh, dat, we, uh, dat de rol van de regio's en de steden hierin essentieel is. En het is ook essentieel dat we met elkaar samenwerken. We moeten met elkaar leren, we moeten met elkaar samenwerken. We moeten zorgen dat we zoveel mogelijk hobbels en uh, bureaucratische regels met elkaar vermijden om constructief te werken aan een herstel na de crisis. Het is daarbij ook belangrijk dat we gebruik maken van bewezen bestaande programma's en dat er niet nieuwe programma's worden opgetuigd die nieuwe kinderziektes met zich meebrengen en nieuwe bureaucratie. Er zijn uh, uh, genoeg uh, programma's binnen de cohesiefondsen uh, die uh, heel goed werken uh, en die uh, ook goed, toe, goed toegepast kunnen worden uh, om uh, te zorgen dat we beter uit deze crisis komen. En we zien ook dat de nieuwe regelingen te vaak te veel macht bij de lidstaten leggen. Dit is een, uh, een soort van recentralisatie van gelden. Uh, bijvoorbeeld bij React EU zien we dat die uh, onwenselijk is. Die zorgt dat het partnerschapsprincipe ondergraven wordt. Ik was heel blij uh, om te horen net uh, hoeveel uh, waarde mevrouw Ferreira hecht aan het partnerschapsprincipe. En, uh, maar we zien dat het te vaak onder druk staat. En natuurlijk is het heel belangrijk om met elkaar eraan te werken dat het goed ingevuld blijft. Maar ik zou aan mevrouw Ferreira willen vragen uh, in hoeverre ze uh, kan en ho in hoeverre ze wil optreden tegen lidstaten die het partnerschapprincipe niet handhaven. Uh, we zien dat lidstaten dit niet altijd doen. Uh, een, een voorbeeld uh, is nu bij de uitwerking van uh, de ESF-programma's in mijn eigen land, uh, Nederland, waarin uh, het, het, de Rijksoverheid uh, de, de rol van de transitieregio's uh, niet wenst te honoreren. Uh, de, de, we hebben een aantal transitieregio's uh, in Nederland uh, en de, daar hoort een verdeling van het budget bij. En uh, de, bij de verdeling van de ESF-fondsen wil mijn eigen lidstaat die verdeling uh, niet honoreren. Ik zou uh, mevrouw Ferreira willen vragen of ze dat weet en uh, in hoeverre ze daar tegenop zou kunnen en willen treden. Want uh, ik ben het zeer met mevrouw uh, Ferreira eens. Make sure the voice of the regions is heard. Dank u wel. Thank you very much, dear colleague. The floor now to Marco Marsilio from the ECR. Ringrazio il commissario europeo per la coesione per il suo intervento. Cercherò di rimanere nel poco tempo concesso, mi limitandomi a fare una proposta che se dovesse trovare condivisione naturalmente avrà bisogno di ulteriori approfondimenti. La mia proposta è quella di creare una agenzia europea dedicata alla coesione sociale. Uno degli scopi qualificanti dell'azione del Comitato delle Regioni, una sorta di prerequisito della sua stessa esistenza, è che lo stanziamento dei fondi risponda effettivamente alle esigenze sul campo attraverso una alleanza per la coesione che sia in grado di interloquire con i territori. Il Comitato ha commissionato uno studio per fornire prove pertinenti ricavate dal lavoro sul campo per la valutazione dell'applicazione dei principi di partenariato e dei programmi per il periodo 2021-27. Sinora ci siamo trovati a inseguire le emergenze. La pandemia da Covid è naturalmente il caso più eclatante perché ha messo a dura prova le strutture sanitarie di tutti i paesi europei. A distanza ormai di un anno e nella prospettiva ancora incerta circa la sua durata, penso alle difficoltà che sta incontrando la campagna vaccinale, ha provocato la perdita di decine di migliaia di posti di lavoro e molte attività economiche hanno chiuso e sono a rischio di chiusura. Ripartire non sarà facile, anche perché le provvidenze economiche non sempre arrivano nei tempi attesi. I membri del Comitato a tal proposito si sono costantemente detti preoccupati per la tendenza all'accentramento dell'elaborazione e della realizzazione delle politiche, evidenziata dalle misure introdotte per affrontare l'impatto socio-economico della pandemia di Covid. La ripresa deve essere equa e basata sulla coesione sociale, economica e territoriale. Deve coinvolgere gli enti locali nell'elaborazione dei piani per la ripresa attraverso una cooperazione strutturata con gli Stati membri, partendo dal presupposto della vulnerabilità del nostro territorio alle calamità con cui ormai sempre più frequentemente ci misuriamo, chiedo al Commissario se non sarebbe preferibile giocare di anticipo. 
Come sappiamo i problemi economici comportano inevitabilmente conseguenze sul piano della coesione. Per questo propongo la creazione di una agenzia europea ad hoc sulla coesione sociale. Dovrebbe essere fornita questa agenzia di disponibilità finanziarie adeguate in grado di monitorare costantemente lo stato di salute di tutti i paesi europei e di fronte a qualunque emergenza possa agire con tempestività e concretezza saltando passaggi burocratici che renderebbero tutto più lento. Avere un'agenzia dedicata alla coesione sociale significherebbe anche una maggiore vicinanza dell'Europa alle nostre aree più vulnerabili, cosa che faciliterebbe non poco il ruolo delle regioni che rimarrebbe quello di ponte tra le istituzioni. Grazie. Grazie mille. The floor now to Nanette Maupetius from EA Group, please. Président. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Merci, Madame la Commissaire, pour votre intervention. Au nom du groupe Alliance européenne, je voudrais tout d'abord vous féliciter. Madame la Commissaire, pour avoir conclu avec succès les accords sur le paquet de la politique de cohésion 2021-2027, afin que les régions puissent rapidement démarrer leur programme. Néanmoins, la situation actuelle suscite de vives préoccupations dans les villes, dans les régions, dans les territoires qui étaient déjà vulnérables avant la crise Covid, je pense aux îles, aux zones rurales, aux régions ultra-périphériques. Même si nous saluons l'importance de l'effort consenti dans le plan de relance, nous sommes inquiets en raison de l'absence d'une méthodologie claire, notamment quant à la question de l'articulation entre la politique de cohésion et les outils de relance, en particulier la facilité pour la reprise et la résilience. Et sur ce point, il en va du respect du principe de partenariat, en particulier les retards et les incertitudes concernant le calendrier, la disponibilité des ressources, la gestion trop centralisée, pose d'énormes défis à nos régions qui devront mettre en place rapidement des programmes de soutien à la relance d'un côté et des programmes plus structurels de développement régional par ailleurs dans un cadre global qui est encore euh, flou et incertain même si vous nous avez apporté des informations ce matin. Donc nous devons travailler ensemble pour promouvoir la valeur de la cohésion comme l'a dit notre président mais transférer les ressources vers des instruments centralisés et gérés par les États membres comporte le risque de passer à côté de la perspective territoriale et des besoins structurels et conjoncturels des régions et des citoyens. Il faut donc coopérer à tous les niveaux institutionnels pour que la politique de cohésion contribue à la croissance. Relevons les défis de la mise en œuvre, ils sont complexes, clarifions les règles et profitons-en pour réduire les charges administratives par la même occasion. Je vous remercie, madame. Merci beaucoup. The floor now to Uros Brezan from the Greens. Thank you, President, uh, dear Commissioner, dear colleagues. Being all deeply involved in health crisis management, we should not forget that uh, climate change, environmental degradation and loss of biodiversity are still major existential threats to our planet. The European Green Deal was developed to address the issue and transform the Union into a modern, resource-efficient and competitive economy that will become carbon neutral till 2050. This is an essential aim absolutely necessary to follow also by new cohesion policy programs in combination with recovery tools. And uh, there is another concern I'd like to underline. It was mentioned before, but uh, we should ensure that the funds actually address needs on the ground. It can only be attained by including local, regional authorities, civil society, social and economic partners, and by respecting partnership principles, meaning that member states should guarantee clear participation procedures, such as making documents accessible at an early stage, ensuring sufficient time for uh, consultation and feedback, ensuring transparent responses to suggestions and comments, and informing about the follow-up of the proposed suggestions. Greener, sustainable and carbon neutral future based on inclusive partnership and participation must be reached also by strongly engaging new cohesion policy programs and recovery tools. Let's seize this future together. 
Thank you on behalf of Greens from Socha Valley in Julian Alps, Slovenia. Thank you very much. The floor now to our first Vice President, Vasco Cordeiro. Muito obrigado, Sr. Presidente. Sr. Presidente, Sra. Comissária, apenas quatro notas que me parecem uh, importantes. A primeira delas, um agradecimento, obviamente, por todo o trabalho desenvolvido pela Comissária Elisa Ferreira. Nós agora temos os instrumentos para iniciar esta recuperação, mas é necessário não esquecer que a forma como implementamos, como, como aplicamos estes fundos, é tão importante quanto o montante de que temos disponível. É tão ou mais importante. É por isso que essa relação entre o mecanismo de recuperação e resiliência e a própria política de coesão é, na minha opinião, absolutamente essencial para que se possa libertar todo o potencial de cada uma dessas políticas. Se não, como referiu o nosso presidente Titi Costas, um, o, o, um dos instrumentos mais poderosos que a União já disponibilizou pode falhar. Segundo a ideia, a recentralização de políticas de investimento pode levar a União Europeia a decisões erradas no, ao nível das cidades e ao nível das regiões. Nós, cidades e regiões, somos aqueles que estão mais próximos do, de concretizar o apoio neste período desafiante. Casos como a habitação, o turismo, o apoio aos, aos empreendedores locais são alguns exemplos da capacidade de intervenção e das áreas de intervenção das entidades locais e regionais. Terceira ideia. Há uma oportunidade única para a União Europeia para, através destas políticas, contribuir para alcançar os objetivos do Green Deal, com programas da política de coesão, com apoio aos serviços públicos. O fazer essas políticas mais verdes no novo período de programação é uma prioridade do Comitê das Regiões. Também aqui, as autoridades locais e regionais são fundamentais. Quarta ideia, nós estamos convencidos no Comitê das Regiões que conseguimos ajudar a construir uma Europa mais justa e mais forte. É necessário é também tenhamos os instrumentos para isso, mas é também fundamental que a própria Europa seja capaz de incentivar e de mobilizar o crescimento uh, para uh, apoio aos seus cidadãos. A questão do, do montante disponível não é a única questão relevante. A forma, a desburocratização, mobilizar recursos e mobilizar, no fundo, procedimentos. Por último, uma saudação quanto à atenção que é dada à questão das regiões ultraperiféricas, como açoriano, português e europeu, não posso deixar de salientar isso. Muito obrigado, Sr. Presidente. Thank you very much, uh, Vasco. Uh, for your intervention at, and I would like at this point uh, Commissioner, before I give you the floor for your reaction to uh, bring something to your attention the EU treaties ask the European Committee of the Regions to speak up for cross-border cooperation in Europe uh, some member states ask the European Commission to withdraw its draft regulation on the European cross-border mechanism while the European Parliament is supporting the draft. The regulation would make it much easier for us, for regions, local authorities, to work together across borders. Uh, so I will address a letter to the Member States making our voice and arguments heard. I will share this letter with you and I would ask you to use uh, your communication channels as well and your help 
with the uh, national governments to actively support the proposal of the European uh, Commission. Uh, uh, because as you understand, for us, the regions and the cities, this issue of cross-border uh, collaboration is of uh, great importance. Thank you very much, and I now give you the floor for your reaction. Commissioner, Commissioner Ferreira, you have the floor. Okay, uh, the floor to Mr. Salzberger, our colleague Mr. Salzberger. Sehr geehrter Herr Präsident, sehr geehrte Frau Kommissarin, ich möchte auf eine sehr wichtige Feststellung der Frau Kommissarin zurückkommen, dass in den Kohäsionsmitteln nicht nur Ausgaben zu sehen sind, sondern dass das sinnvolle Investitionen in die Programme der Regionen und der Kommunen zur Wiederbelebung Europas nach der Pandemie zu sehen sind. Die Kohäsionspolitik, das ist ja unbestritten, ist die wichtigste Investitionspolitik der EU zur Entwicklung der Regionen und Städte. Es besteht nämlich durch Corona die große Gefahr, dass die bestehenden Ungleichgewichte unter den Regionen und der Erweiterungsländer in der EU und der Erweiterungsländer zunehmen werden. Und das trifft natürlich dann auch ganz besonders die Erweiterungsländer des Westbalkan. Ich wollte der Frau Kommissarin nur sagen, der Einsatz von so viel Geld fordert natürlich erstens auch eine wirksame Kontrolle gegen den Missbrauch. Was macht man da? Zweitens, es fordert vereinfacht, vereinfacht die Regeln für die Inanspruchnahme. Das ist kein Widerspruch. Was tun wir, wenn es keine und nicht ausreichend geeignete Programme gibt, die ausgearbeitet werden, weil das Know-how fehlt? Und viertens, was macht die Kommission, um die Mitgliedstaaten wirklich dazu motiv zu motivieren, dass sie ihre Regionen und Städte einbeziehen? Denn bis spätestens April 2021 ist, sind die Aufbaupläne vorzulegen. Und das ist nicht mehr viel Zeit. Thank you very much. Rafael Raskowski. Uh, I wanted to talk about three things, really. First of all, participation of regional authorities and consultations. Secondly, transparent and non-political criteria. And thirdly, direct use of funds. It is incredibly important that regional authorities and cities are consulted when we talk about the future of structural policy, cohesion policy, but also when it comes to new instruments. Secondly, we need to make sure that all the um, um, all the process is done in a transparent manner and that criteria are non-political and here the commission has to be incredibly tough and all the european institutions on the member states because they use political criteria i don't know whether you know but warsaw was taken out of the operational programs as the only part of poland and brought back two days ago so we need to be tough on that and thirdly, especially when it comes to new instruments, I pledge to you and I submit to you a possibility for use of limited amount of funds directly with the regional authorities, with the cities, because that would allow us to actually create a situation in which we will all see the results of the policies that we're implementing. And this is the last sentence. We cannot really meet our priorities when it comes to Green Deal without involving the cities. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rafael. Uh, Manu, uh, Guillermo Fernandez Vara now, please, the floor. Sí, bueno, buenas tardes, estimada eh, eh, comisaria, querida, querida Elisa. Se nota que, que ha trabajado en la política regional en el norte de Portugal por la sensibilidad hacia, hacia las regiones. ¿no? Los gobiernos regionales estamos, estamos eh, gestionando en estos momentos y vamos a tener que gestionar en los próximos tres años el N más 3 del, del anterior programa operativo, 1420, 
el nuevo programa operativo eh, 21-27, la parte de FEADER que va incluida en el segundo pilar de la política agraria comunitaria, los fondos REAC, los fondos Next Generation. ¿no? ¿Qué quiero decir con esto? Que va a ser más necesario que nunca, en primer lugar, la flexibilidad y, en segundo lugar, la complementariedad. Se hace imprescindible que divisemos el futuro como un proyecto global, como un todo, al servicio de una idea, el desarrollo regional como instrumento de la igualdad de oportunidades. En ese contexto, esa flexibilidad, esa colaboración, esa cooperación se hace ahora más necesario que nunca, hacia arriba, hacia el lado y hacia abajo, con los gobiernos nacionales, con los gobiernos locales, con la… Eh, eh, con los gobiernos transfronterizos en aquellos casos, como es mi región, de, de relación con la querida Portugal. ¿no? Quiero desde aquí, por tanto, agradecer, querida comisaria, el, el enorme esfuerzo, porque esta es la, la, la hora de Europa y de, lo, de los europeos. Ahora mismo Europa es cuando se la juega. Muchas gracias, señor presidente. Thank you very much. Elizabeth Nebreda Villa, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Bom dia, Comisaria Ferreira. Thank you for your presentation and your words. We are at the crossroads. To live up to the challenge and not to fail future generations, we must work differently bringing together new cohesion policy programs and recovery tools to promote positive synergies is surely a good starting point, but it will not be enough. For these new instruments to reach to their full potential, better government is needed, one open to direct participation of regions as it has been repeatedly requested. In this regard, on behalf of the regions, members of the initiative, Regions for EU Recovery, I would like to thank you, Commissioner, for your answer to the joint letter that we addressed European leaders calling for greater involvement of the regions in EU decision-making in the post-COVID recovery. At national level, consultation processes within member states must recognize the areas of competence conferred to regions and allow them to implement the relevant recovery funds in order to maximize their impact. At EU level, we call on the Commission to keep a close surveillance on how member states allocate these resources if all vices and past mistakes are to be averted. Together, we must ensure that these instruments reach our SMEs, our civil Thank society. You. Thank you very much, President. Thank you very much. Uh, let me inform you that in, uh, as of right now, the interpreters are reminding us that they have to uh, stop transmitting. Uh, they have to take a break um, according to the procedures, uh, which means that from now on, uh, only English is the available language. The floor now to Guillaume Cross, please. Dear colleagues, uh, we will have to move very quickly so everyone has one minute in uh, 12 minutes from now i give the floor to the commissioner mr cross go ahead okay jorge ascon navarro please Do you hear me? Yes, we do. Thank you very much, dear president, dear colleagues. Quiero que mi intervención sea muy clara. Quiero que el objetivo de la intervención sea muy clara. La participación de las ciudades en los fondos europeos y en las políticas de cohesión tiene que ser distinta de la que es actualmente. Si queremos ser más justos, si queremos ser más eficientes, el papel de las ciudades tiene que cambiar. Yo quiero unir mi voz a la de otros muchos alcaldes, algunos que hemos oído hoy, diciendo que hay que tener criterios más transparentes, que es necesario aparcar criterios políticos a la hora de repartir los fondos, como hemos visto en algunas ocasiones. Tenemos un reto importantísimo, 
Y aunque mi intervención sea crítica, yo quiero fundamentalmente fijarme en las cosas que hoy en Europa se están haciendo bien. Quiero fijarme en programas como el de 100 ciudades sostenibles climáticamente antes de 2030. Un ejemplo, sin ningún género de dudas, un ejemplo que va a servir de inspiración para otras muchas ciudades y en el que estoy convencido de que podremos encontrarnos. Ese es el camino. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you very much. Agnes Rampal, please. The floor to Miria Vejkapera. Kiitos puheenjohtaja ja armon komissaari. Tulen alueelta, jossa on harva asutus, pitkät etäisyydet ja neljä täysin erilaista vuoden aikaa. Meille kohesiopolitiikalla on erityistä merkitystä tasamaan erilaisia suhdanneeroja, luomaan mahdollisuuksia yrityksille kilpailukyvyn parantamiseen ja suurelle talouskasvulle. Kuten komissaari puheesta kuulimme, niin raha on nyt jaossa ja ohjelma. Kaikilta, olemmeko valmiita, olemmeko, onko meillä ohjelma valmiita ja liikkeet valmiita. Oulussa, Suomessa me panostamme digitalisaatioon, kehitykseen, nuorten There is a problem with your connection, so the floor goes to Gunther Platter, please. The floor to René de Heer. Thank you. Uh, I would like to thank Commissioner Ferreira for her contribution to combine forces between cohesion and recovery funds. We can only succeed in the recovery of our economy if there is a good cooperation between the national, regional and local governments. For that reason, I would firmly underline the importance of the principle of partnership. And we as committee are looking at the Commission to uphold and assert that principle. Too often regions and cities are only asked for an opinion instead of being co-architect for recovery plans. And that's why I want to appeal to you to compel that regions and cities are full partners by the making and implementation of recovery plans. Thank you very much. Thank you. The floor to Paula Fernandez Viana, please. programas europeos que van a financiar la recuperación económica. Las autoridades locales y regionales conocemos profundamente los problemas y desafíos de nuestros territorios y somos las más próximas a los agentes que generan desarrollo e innovación. Estoy totalmente de acuerdo con su intervención. Y desde Cantabria tememos que las autoridades estatales utilicen los fondos del plan de recuperación para recuperar competencias que no son autonómicas. Mi pregunta es... ¿Qué va a hacer la Comisión Europea para propiciar la participación regional y local en la preparación de los programas 21-27 del Plan de Recuperación y de Resiliencia? Desde Cantabria reclamamos mayor gobernanza, que se nos permita participar en la gestión del reparto de los recursos europeos y denunciamos los criterios del Gobierno de España para el reparto de los 10.000 millones del Fondo REA, que se está imponiendo de manera unilateral. Muchísimas gracias, Presidente. Thank you very much. Marius Frankowski, please. Dziękuję, panie przewodniczący. Szanowna pani komisarz, chciałbym dzisiaj zwrócić uwagę na wyzwania związane z planowaniem programów polityki spójności w odniesieniu do regionów metropolitalnych, które przechodzą do kategorii regionów lepiej rozwiniętych. W przypadku polskiego regionu NUS 2 warszawskiego stołecznego zróżnicowanie pod tym względem osiąga dzisiaj poziom ponad 100 punktów procentowych. Planowane wsparcie w nowym programie regionalnym ma wynieść zaledwie 
5% środków pozyskanych w obecnym okresie. Taka sytuacja stoi w sprzeczności z celami polityki spójności, u których podstaw leży zrównoważony rozwój poszczególnych regionów, jak i całej Unii Europejskiej. Zwracam się do Komisji Europejskiej o wzięcie powyższego pod uwagę podczas negocjacji umowy partnerstwa dla Polski i odpowiednie odzwierciedlenie potencjału i zróżnicowania regionu warszawskiego stołecznego, uwzględniające potrzeby przedsiębiorców sektora naukowo-badawczego oraz lokalnych samorządów. Jednocześnie zwracam uwagę, że wsparcie w ramach instrumentów unijnych mających służyć odbudowie gospodarek po kryzysie pandemicznym nie może być postrzegane jako narzędzie zastępujące realizację celów polityki spójności, ale do niej komplementarne. Thank you. Thank you. The floor to Rastislav Trinka, please. please. Dear Mr. President, dear Mr. Commissioner and colleagues, when discussing the plan, authorities who are closer to the citizens must have their say. There is no other way. Only we know what really bothers us uh, and what must be done. It's enough to give us uh, the final opportunity to help ourselves. This is the time. Unfortunately, we self-governments too often fulfill the decisions of others without the possibility of influencing and improving them. Despite a system that we do not consider an effective option for supporting cities and regions, we in Slovakia have so far agreed with national government on no more than half of the purpose areas in the recovery plan and this is only step zero of the recovery and long voyage ahead. For the boat to make its, its de destination, everyone must paddle. True partnership is crucial. Otherwise, the boat is going in circles. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Guillaume Gross, please. Oui, merci. Euh, merci de me donner la parole. Madame la commissaire, chers collègues, concernant l'articulation des plans de relance nationaux et des fonds de la politique de cohésion, l'étude récente menée par le comité des régions pointe clairement que les États n'associent que de très loin les collectivités euh, territoriales. Au premier rang desquels se retrouvent, se trouvent des autorités régionales et bien souvent euh, pilotent euh, la, la mise en, en œuvre des programmes de la cohésion. De fait, le risque de ne pas mobiliser efficacement, ça l'a déjà été dit, Reactiu et les euh, financements 21-27 au démarrage est réel. Donc, quel mécanisme et allègement allez-vous mettre en œuvre pour faire en sorte que euh, dans, les, dans, les, euh, dans deux ans, nous ne constations pas l'échec de cette initiative de relance et en particulier au niveau territorial et quelles sont vos attentes vis-à-vis -vis des États membres sur ce sujet Je vous remercie. Thank you. Sari Raucio is our last member who will intervene now. Thank you so much, Mr. President, and thank you, uh, dear Commissar. It's a very, very important um, issue, and I only want to stress that also in the macro region um, uh, of, of Baltic Sea region, uh, we have been discussing about the same issue, and I think it's very, very important that we uh, create, do this co-creation between all um, countries, all regions, all cities, and also all different stakeholders uh, in order to get the best um, goals and reach the best goals. So thank you. This is very, very important and all the best. Thank you. Thank you very much. Commissioner Ferreira, you have the floor for your final remarks and reaction. Thank you.
I understand there is a technical issue with uh, the connection of uh, Commissioner Ferreira. I would like to ask the administration if it's possible for Commissioner Ferreira to react via the phone if it's not possible for her to connect. I would ask the administration to respond to me. Are we going to have Commissioner Ferreira or not? Okay. I'm informed that it's not possible to connect with Commissioner Ferreira. She has a technical issue. Uh, so uh, we, she, she informed us that uh, she will answer to our members in writing. Uh, and this way, she will be able to reply to all the questions and the remarks that were made by our members today in this very interesting uh, debate. This is what I propose, and this is uh, what we will convey to uh, the cabinet of uh, Ms. Ferreira. And uh, hopefully we will get an answer in writing to all of the questions and uh, the comments that you have made. So, uh, dear colleagues, we will uh, now intervene and uh, we will uh, meet again at... Uh, ah, now I can speak. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Oh, terrible. I've, I've got four computers around me. I'm sorry. Uh, is, can I still answer you or is it too late, President? No, no, you can go, you can go ahead. I can. Okay, good. Uh, so I will be speaking in English. Uh, I apologize to all the different language speakers, but uh, I think we cannot, um, we don't have the uh, interpretation as far as I could uh, as I could understand. Sorry about these connections, but I was uh, wanting uh, pressing to speak, and I apparently there was no authorization uh, for me to speak. So we'll 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 have to improve this functioning in in uh, <laughs> further on. Uh, so uh, let, let me just try to address groups of questions. Um, uh, first, thank, thanks to everybody that made the positive comments on the work that we have been doing. I think it's it's a big team. It's your group, it's the parliament, it's the council, and it's the staff uh, of DG Regio, of DG Reform, and all the other the staff that that all over works uh, in a big team. Uh, in fact, uh, I would uh, I would touch upon uh, several questions. First, um, I think there were lots and lots of questions about uh, the the partnership principle. And for us, this is really, I tried to address it in my initial speech, and, um, and I, I think it's a very crucial thing. Uh, so we have to, to strike the right balance between uh, sharing, participation, and the need uh, to have a quick answer to our companies, to our citizens, in terms of starting to deliver. But, uh, but we are very attentive that, in fact, in particular, when it comes to the normal programs and to the programs that are associated and are within the recovery and resilience plans that in fact we have a sufficiently sound participation of the different levels. Uh, we were talking also on lots of questions about the speed. Uh, okay, we are, uh, as, uh, as you know, 
we finish uh, most of the cohesion legislation uh, until December. So we, had, we just have to finish, like, we hope to finish next week with Parliament and Council, just the final, final uh, parts of, uh, of, uh, of the Common Provisions Regulation and of the Regional Fund. Uh, but the bulk of the texts are finished. This allows member states and regions to start preparing because all the eligibilities are already, uh, are already established and the, the crucial parts of the text are, are finished. So, of course, formally, we didn't finish completely. It was not published. It will go through the uh, jurists, linguists, but the most relevant uh, legal texts, they are there. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, let's, let's be clear about the timings. Everything that depends on the next generation, so everything that depends on the borrowing, uh, the Commission going to the markets and borrowing 750 million, uh, billion euros, and this will be the source, financial source, for React EU, for the just part of the Just Transition Fund, and for the RRF, uh, has to go through a series uh, of, of, of procedures. And the most important one is that all member states have got to give the authorization to the European Commission to, for the Commission to go to the market. So this is a crucial thing, and, uh, and, uh, and it's, it's indispensable because we cannot borrow in the market without an unanimous, unanimous uh, authorization by member states. And the quicker this procedure is finished, the, the, the quickest uh, it is to go to the market to borrow. Uh, then we have got to finish the plans of the member states and the proposals of the member states. So this is in the hands of the member states as well. So several member states have already presented their initial um, reform plans to the Commission, and the dialogue is going on, but certain member states didn't yet present anything. So this work has got to be finished. So we are talking about springtime, but as early as possible to close these, 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 these procedures. But in the meantime, I want to underline that there is no a, a, a vacuum. So from the previous um, uh, multi-annual framework of support, uh, the uh, effective execution uh, level is, uh, I mean, for, uh, for the most advanced member states, around 50% of the overall uh, amount of money available. Or, uh, so there is there are margins. Of course, this we allowed through CRE re reprogramming what was not spent yet, and this goes on. And so member states no, and and regions and law and municipalities they have this possibility to use this uh, with maximum maximum flexibility and maximum simplification. Uh, as I told you, 20 billion have already been spent. But the full flexibility allows for reprogramming across programs, across regions. Um, you, can, you, can, uh, you can reprogram from social fund to regional fund or vice versa from, uh, and from cohesion fund uh, to the other ones. And talking about speed, speed this facility, the CRE and CRE Plus, was, was uh, implemented and it is, is in operation since April. The pandemic started in uh, February, March. So it's since April, this is this is done. So we did the the speediest procedure because in two weeks we had CRE going through the Parliament, through growing through all the procedures, and in another two weeks CRE, CRE plus. So by the end of April it was done, and and we and the speed goes on. So uh, and that's what we did also with the legislation. Uh, another L so this this instrument is still there. The execution of the usual funds still needs to be speeded up in a lot of member states and a lot of regions. And on the, on, on top of this, for the eligibility for the use of React EU, that is a prolongation with uh, some uh, some changes, but the prolongation until 2023 of the of the CRE uh, kind of instrument, uh, you have the eligibility uh, to, to be reimbursed, it's, it's for projects and programs that started since the 1st of February. So even if you, if you, if you need, if you want, 
I mean, we are waiting here in the Commission for the plans for, for REACT because we have got to know uh, how you want to use the money because also we have got to be accountable. Uh, but, 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 uh, but uh, I mean, we are speeding up uh, the negotiations and as soon as the, uh, the money is available, because this money depends on, uh, on the new next generation instrument, so this borrowing, uh, as soon as the money, there is a, the possibility to reimburse uh, backwards. Uh, so this, I mean, I don't think there is a really scarcity of money, but I think we need uh, to have a seamless kind of transition from the emergency instruments into the most, most long-term instruments. Uh, there, were, there were lots of questions also about the... Uh, the, 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 oh, so the social aspects, the, oh, but before that, about, about the environment and about the consideration of recovery, but recovering along different bases. And of course, our, uh, the, the recovery and resilience plan requires that use of funds will be 37% allocated uh, to, uh, to, to green and in particular climate investments and uh, the, um, and 20% for digital uh, investments, which are a way to combine, the, 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 to, to allocate, to a new, to define a new strategy for the future. Uh, also, the, in the European Regional Fund, you have 30% uh, as a target for for uh, for the use of the funds, but then you have this digital and climate requirements with different levels of. of uh, of, of thresholds according to the regions, but this this concern is there. Then there is the role of cities, and uh, I find this a very important issue uh, because the role of cities is absolutely crucial for sure. Uh, but we have got to, to bear in mind that the, in the regional fund, the proposal of the Commission was that uh, cities and urban areas would uh, be allocated uh, with uh, ex extra margins of maneuver, at least 6% of the ERDF, and uh, it ended up with 8%. Uh, but we have got also to bear in mind this balanced approach, that in fact uh, there is uh, this capacity, this uh, strong capacity that, uh, that the big cities have uh, to combine it also with the, the strategy for the middle-sized cities and towns, uh, and also for the, 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 the fact that uh, the biggest centers, the most developed centers, have got to be supported in those uh, kind of investments that really front load, that create something, com something new, and in programs and projects that spread development around. Because what we are observing, and it's not only the Commission, it's also the World Bank and the studies that have been done, is that imbalances um, are increasing and they will have increased after this crisis more than before. So cohesion policy has got to have this specific concern of rebalancing the growth, rebalancing, rebalancing development. And so the role of cities has got to be uh, seen with, within this context that, in fact, probably they also have to reflect on their internal income and how you redistribute internally the income. But, of course, there is this specific role uh, that we expect them to play towards the surrounding areas and also towards uh, the most uh, uh, complex or sophisticated or, uh, or innovative uh, ways to, uh, to, to, use, to use the funds. Um, uh, apart from this, I'd also like to, 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 to underline, uh, the, and I, I, Vasco Cordeiro and Madame um, Marpercius Marie, uh, that, that spoke in French. I mean, the, 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 this convergence aspect is particularly uh, sensitive in those regions that suffered the most. And for instance, REACT is supposed to address in a proportionate way uh, the regions that suffered the most. And of course, the outermost regions suffered a lot. Uh, most of them, and not only them, but those regions that re depend on tourism, on industry, those that needed physical contact 
for their development, they suffer much more than others. The cultural activities, so this is now one of the targets that we have, um, that we that that it's the support that we want we want to give uh, to these regions through React is specific specifically targeting, but also the recovery instrument has got to bring these regions uh, forward. And in the negotiations of the funds, there was a particular care with, uh, with the, the groups, the outermost regions, groups in French, but uh, uh, the outermost regions exactly because they don't have a lot of alternatives. They, are, they depend a lot on flights. They depend a lot of tourism. They re depend a lot on uh, on agricultural policies and exports, and so they were very, very affected. But they are the kind of extra uh, dramatic situation. But this kind of situation has got to be also reflected in the way we organize not only the emergency support but also the the relaunch of the of the for the future. Uh, last comment on simplification we made a lot of simplification in the when we uh, now i mean implemented cree and cree plex and react and also in the uh, in the the regional fund uh, uh, legislation i call your attention for the simplification that does mean that you and us are less accountable uh, towards citizens and towards the monitoring and auditing boards so we have got really to fine tune the way we address uh, this um, this accounting uh, and at the same time simplifying procedures but there are more than 80 new uh, procedures that uh, are exactly trying to touch upon this issue simplification so uh, i think i addressed uh, 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 this uh, more, uh, most of the of the issues i would only like to underline that also in interreg we have got to be more focused and several speakers addressed the need to cooperate. And of course, we have got to give more and more content to what we do with Interreg. React now can cover also um, inter, I mean, uh, cooperation between border regions. And I call your attention to the need to give substance uh, to, uh, to, to what we do, in particular in those regions like Central Europe, and like the Baltic area, and I, I thank the intervention uh, of the Baltic uh, um, representatives, where we have a lot, a lot, a lot of programs. And so sometimes things really, uh, I mean, can, can lose, uh, can lose uh, I mean, uh, focus. Uh, my last, last comment for social aspects. In fact, social aspects uh, are absolutely crucial. Um, and they are at the center of this recovery when we say no one can be left behind. There was a, a, a suggestion to create a new agency. This is something that needs more reflection. But uh, uh, the social aspect is at the core of our, of our recovery strategy. So we just have to make sure that by combining adequately the social fund, the regional fund, the RRF, that we really... I mean, create value added and give our citizens the capacity to participate fully in the development of Europe. Thank you very much. I'm sorry uh, about this. I mean, the technical problems are, I cannot do a lot about it, but I tried not to give the questions without answer because the written answers tend to be very rigid, very uh, schematic. And I was, I, I was fearing that I would not be able to address all the questions that have been put. And they, ha they were so relevant that I wanted really to make an effort to do it. Thank you very much indeed. And, um, and we'll keep in touch, uh, hopefully, with less, less uh, digital problems in the future. Yes. And let's, let's hope, Commissioner, that we will be able to finally meet in person because it's really tiring for all of us, the yes. fact that we have to connect uh, discuss uh, online all the time. Uh, you know, we are at least 500 people connected at this time, members of the uh, European Committee of the Regions who have followed our debate. And it's really a pity that we cannot meet in Brussels and discuss in person. Uh, uh, I really want to thank you. Uh, you reiterated the fact that uh, you are the best friend of the Committee of the Regions in today 
And uh, I have to thank you because you gave answers to all of our members' questions and concerns and comments. And I think that we now we have a clear view of uh, how we will move forward, both in addressing the coronavirus uh, health crisis, but also, and most importantly, the recovery. So it is true that uh, using the European funds, I do it here in my region, in Central Macedonia. Uh, if it was not for the funds used from the European Union, the structural funds, we would not have been able to help our hospitals, to help our industry and our businesses revive and stay strong during this pandemic. So I really believe that we have great things to do ahead of us. The news you gave us were very important on the flexibility of the programs. And this is how we want to move forward because the crisis is still unfolding. Matter of fact, we are having a third wave coming into Greece as we speak. So I'm really hoping that uh, we will have a lot of things to do together uh, thanks to the very good collaboration and the close collaboration that we have Committee of the Regions and yourself. So thank you very much again, Elisa, Commissioner Ferreira, for your time and your very important involvement. Eu ficarei stop. Obrigada. Merci. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Gracias. Gracias. So, dear colleagues, after this very interesting debate with Commissioner Ferreira,